In this video, we're going to talk about uh, just kind of some simple graphing and of parametric equations and then how to convert them into a Cartesian form, which isn't necessarily a y equals form, but it's kind of equations we're more used to seeing with just, you know, x's and y's. So first of all, uh, we're going to make a table here and we're going to then plot the uh, parametric equation given. Um, so let me just start, you know, you see that it's, uh, it gives both an x and y component and I've given a domain that t is greater than zero. So let me just get a few points here, like zero, one, two, three, that'd probably even be enough. So the x component is negative t squared, while well, negative zero squared is zero. Negative one squared is negative one, negative two squared is negative four, and negative 3 squared is negative 9. Next, the y component is 2t plus 3. So 2 multiplied by 0 plus 3 is 3. 2 multiplied by 1 plus 3 is 5. 2 multiplied by 2 plus 3 is 7. And 2 multiplied by 3 plus 3 is 9. Well, now I graph these coordinates. Remember, this is the path of something t does not appear on the graph. So we've got the point 0, 3 in here, negative 1, 5, yeah, negative 4, 7 in here, and negative 9, negative, or negative 9, 9, like that. So it kind of looks like this. Now, one thing we usually do in parametrics that we haven't, two things I guess that we haven't had to do before is label uh, where it starts. We call that the initial point. Now, if it had an end point, uh, then we would call that end point the terminal point. The other thing we'll sometimes do is draw an arrow to denote the direction it was moving. Um, that'll get more clear in the next example why that's important. Okay, so that's it. That's graphing our parametric equation. Now, to turn it into a Cartesian equation, again, that just means a, a, in terms of just x and y without the t, we, get, we do what's called getting rid of the parameter. Uh, of course, we would like to end up with a y equals. That's what we're used to. So I'm going to rewrite this in terms of t. Okay? So instead of you know x equals negative t squared, I could say that t is equal to the square root of negative x. And then I can just substitute that in for t in the y equation. So I'd end up with y equals 2 multiplied by the square root of negative x plus 3. And this would be my Cartesian equation. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. It's kind of the same as polar coordinates, where if something is given to you in polar coordinates, there is probably a reason. Um, we lose something when we when we say it, send it to Cartesian form, and by that I mean uh, we maybe lose an idea of how the graph was behaving, the direction the graph was moving. Uh, we have to do some work with the domain. So if something is given to you in parametric form, there was probably a reason, and I would I would leave it in that form. Uh, but at least now we can see, you know, does the graph look correct? And, and certainly, you know, if you're thinking, well, it's a square root, it certainly has the curve of a square root, but it's negative x, so it was reflected, shifted up three and stretched, and it certainly, you know, fulfills all of those things. Okay, let me do this, uh, this other one real quick. So our points are negative one. Let's just, you know, stay in the domain here. So uh, x component was 4 plus t squared, so 4 plus negative 1 squared is 5. 4 plus 0 squared is 4. Uh, this will be 5. And 4 plus 2 squared will be 8. The y component is 5t squared, so 5 multiplied by negative 5 and squared is 5. This will be 0. This will be 5. This will be 20. So plotting those points, the first is 5, 5, so that's right up in here. The next point is 4, 0, like that. The next point is 5, 5. Well, this is different. This is not, this doesn't happen in a normal old Cartesian form. We don't track back over the same point. 
and then of course we've got some point 820 that would be you know way up in here like that so what happens here is this goes down and then comes back over the same spot so here's the initial point here's the terminal point and if you were going to draw an arrow with the path you'd say well it came down and then went right back up over itself and again when we make this into a uh, Cartesian equation we're going to lose that you know we're going to lose that that happened and again the the reason for doing parametrics is to map a path well this is very common for something to go one way and then backtrack over its same path so we're losing that you know when once we say well let's make it a Cartesian of course this would become t equals uh, the square root of x minus 4 and then you know we plug that in so we end up with y equals just 5 multiplied by x minus 4 this is our Cartesian equation certainly we could change the domain and and work with that but it's uh, it's just a linear function and we're not going to be able to see that it tracked over itself twice and again that's why I would recommend just leaving something in terms of the uh, parametric equation you were given